Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Felt like the bit of an end of a pick and mix there. Right. Just throw them all on. Throw them so all see on. What happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this show is all about using uh, modulation pedals t tastefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we sat, sat down yesterday and we, we had a whole bunch of modulation pedals. I thought there's, there's some really interesting things that we can point out. So what you'll notice what we don't have on here is a chorus. Um, what we thought we'd do is have a look at some just cool things to do with modulation that you might not have thought of. Yes, we did a, a video a few weeks back, a few months back, called 10 Cool Things to Do with Delay or 10 Things to Do with Your Delay Pedal, something like that, mm -hmm. which is basically the idea being um, we get so many comments, emails... Uh, usually comments actually either on Instagram, you can follow us on Instagram, uh, or at that pedal show YouTube channel, which says things like, I've got a delay pedal, don't know how to use it. Got a chorus, don't know how to use it. Uh, I've had I've heard a flanger, but it always sounds overbaked to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How on earth do you use these things? So the idea of this show is to go through the common and less common modulation types and mm -hmm. suggest a bunch of ways. We've actually got 11, not 10. 11. So I'm not quite sure what it'll say in the title, but <laughs> um, we've got 11 things uh, to hopefully inspire you onwards in your quest for a great sound and to play better. For Wobbly Williams. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was Dan's tribute band, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> Fat guy I singing angels. angels instead. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely slide solo in that. Oh, yeah. That's one of Dougie's proudest moments. He picked up the guitar on a jam night and nailed the solo without having any idea what he was doing. Doug? Doug. Uh, the drummer, Doug? Yep. All right. Uh, okay, what's number one on our list then? Number one is... Oh, it's me starting, Dan. Okay. It's using tremolo to create a rhythmic effect. Okay, so... Um, we have the Victory V140, the new Super, Super Duchess. Duchess, 100 watts of pure love, and uh, the Subtech MiG 50, uh, Josh Scott modded model. 50 watts of also pure just, love. Just so good. Yeah, um, together they sound like so. You'll have to operate the equipment. Okay. The astute among you will notice that I actually have two inputs go into the MiG-50, which I'll get to later. Okay. okay. And that was, um, so they're set pretty high headroomy. We've been getting a lot of people moaning about that just recently, saying, why don't you ever use crunchy, dirty amps? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. Yeah, we'll get to that. Anyway, here's it with the Stratocaster. <laughs> sounds ace. Sounds nice. Yeah. Fairly... Fairly what we might call a flat, clean sound. Yes, lovely. Okay, so use tremolo to come up with a rhythmic um, part of your song. Now this really helps. One thing that's really tough about using tremolo, here is the sound of tremolo while we're on that front. And this is a straight, uh, so tremolo for anyone who doesn't know is um, it's modulating volume. So it's turning your volume up and down and it can do that in different ways. And this is the sound of that. <laughs> And very lovely it is too, one of the earliest ever um, guitar effects because mm -hmm. in the early days they used to just vary the bias on the output valves, turn them on and off basically. Yeah. Um, so that's 
that's that. One of the problems that everyone comes up against with tremolo is if you are using it in a song, mm -hmm. it can be impossibly difficult to set the, the yeah the tempo. Mm -hmm. So there's two ways around that. One is you set the tempo. You, you start the tune. So you you start the tune, and then it's up to the drummer and the bass player and everyone else in the band to stick with you. Yeah, and if they can't hear you, you're not loud enough. <laughs> um, another way around it is you can, as it gets more complex, you can sync everything up to stuff like, uh, so the band is all synced on the same MIDI. Yeah. Crap. If you want to get into that, good luck. Um, I just, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Somewhere between those two. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm Nick just. Matt nails his colours to the mask. I am so anti all that. It's unbelievable, but you know it's required in a lot of modern music settings, especially if you're playing to stuff like, you know, if you, the amount, the amount. Sorry, there's a bit of a tangent here. The amount of modern gigs you go to where a good proportion of it's on some backing track somewhere. To hear the gig, they've got headphones for the audience. Unless <laughs> it's there. So you, so you can't get around it in some situations. But anyway. So that's technology, and most of us playing out most of the time don't have access to that technology. The third way is if you get a tremolo with a tap tempo control on it. Very, very handy. And they are not massively common, are they? But they do exist. Uh, no, but they do exist. Uh, I think the Tapper Whirl uh, from a Cusack, John Cusack, was one of the first out there. And then, you know, lots of follow through. This is the Monument, and we really like this because it also has... Uh, another mode, the harmonic mode, which we'll get into in a, bit. in a bit. But it also allows you to change the waveform. Uh, so, for example, if you play, um, this is the a standard, uh, more or less a sine wave, which has um, its sort of, you know, it, it's smooth, basically, um, sort of leans in and out of, of the waveform. So this is this is that one. <laughs> Now, that's really great, but if you've got a song that you want to add a bit more um, tued to, what you can do is, is change the waveform to a square wave, which sounds like this. It's add, literally on and off. Exactly. So now, if we add a little bit of El Grunjo to that. Give me some of that. It's the Who song, isn't it? What's the Who song that does that? Won't get fooled again? Uh, 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 one, two, three, four, won't get fooled again. Sorry, there you go. Is that that one? I, I, I don't know. I don't there's a Who so. song with a tremolo okay. and, it, and it goes into feedback at the end. But there's a, I mean, it's all your, it's, you've got your song tempo is there in abundance, and it's a really, it's a great yeah the, sound. The song that I always reference is the REM one. Um, I, yeah, keep, I yeah, always yeah. say, "What's the frequency, Kenneth?" It's not "What's the frequency, Kenneth?" It's "Crush with Eyeliner." All oh, right, "Crush with Eyeliner." And then there's also <laughs> the um, the Smiths tune. Um, yeah, "How Soon Is Now." That's right. There's some yeah, some great examples of that, but it's a it's a it's such a great sound. Yeah, um, and a really cool way to use a tremolo. So show me how that tap tap works then. If I want it, I think you have to change your your division. Yeah. So if you got so what that 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 so that's um, triplets is that's, it? Uh, no, that would be da ba 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 ba. Yeah. Um, you just want eight notes. Yeah. So so. The great thing about that is if you're going through the song and the drummer's had a couple of shandies in the break. As they tend to do. As they tend to do, you can just retap it. Yeah, right. Whereas if you're bending down to sort the knob out, as it were, um, you, it might be more problematic. Have we adequately covered that, Dan? I think we have. I think can we I hear have. it with the telly? I want to hear it with the telly.
It's so cool. Killer. So cool. Absolutely brilliant sound. Okay, that's right. number one. Number one. Moving on. Moving Dan, on. your turn. Um, the best chorus is a flanger. Okay. Now, I was intrigued by this. The best chorus is a flanger. I. Uh, everyone knows my love of the Electromissus. When I first uh, got into Andy Summers, when I first got my CE1, I was convinced what I was hearing was a CE1, but it wasn't. In fact, it was an Electric Mistress flanger. Uh, I've actually got the ADA flanger on here today because there's something else we're going to get to in a little bit. But the idea with the flanger, the flanger and the chorus are very similar in nature. The flanger has a shorter delay time. But what you can do with, with the flangers, um, so this, for example, has got this manual control, which moves the, the time. Um, of course, the rate moves the time, but modulates the time. Right. But the, the manual can give you that, the, it's a slightly further delay time for, for a chorus. So... Um, I go back down. So if I if I just hit the strings, you'll hear the delay, so turn that up. You can hear it, it's like so I think a lot of people have this idea of the flanger because you've you've heard it on uh so many songs and that big um the, the rock thing but for clean sounds uh, and using this flanger it, as a is chorus. that it sweeping through it exactly, exactly see I would if if I'd have heard that sound I would have said it was a chorus when you when you were playing that right jangly indie type thing right so yeah the uh I mean they're so they're so close but I think a lot of people uh, hear that sound and automatically go, okay, well, what I need then is a chorus. In actual fact, uh, for me, that shimmery, clean thing, I always get the better tones from a flanger. I use the chorus for something different. And does it have to have that manual control in order to do it? Um, no, no, not necessarily, because that like um, a, a lot of them have that, and it, it, it helps, you know, to play, to have, play, 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 so. play. Love it. I just love it. That is very, very nice. I'm it's just going to check that we don't cover this later on. Here's the list of doom. Yeah, so that sound mm -hmm. reminded me a lot of um, heavy rock in the 80s. Okay, yes. Had that kind of... Yep. Um, I mean, we don't... Just play again a sec. I just want to turn it on again. <laughs> Yeah. 
reminds me so much of stuff like Paul Gilbert and yeah right well Paul Gilbert the, his flange of the airplane yeah, flange, yeah. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll come on we'll to get, that we'll so that. that might have not been the exact AC sound but I definitely that reminds me of that so much yeah so who you know who'd have thunk it right from super clean lovely jangly all the way through to full on I just I, I find that sh the ability to get that shorter delay time there's a there's a whole different application there that you get with flanges that you don't necessarily get with the choruses. Mm. Um, yeah, that, that's it's a it's a wonderful thing. So yeah, flanges for your, for your instead chorus of a chorus. Yeah, man, very cool, very cool. Okay, number three, uh, very simple one. This emulate an organ with a rotary speaker simulator. Okay, show us your organ. So this happens a lot, and I'll. <laughs> Oh, we're turning into Andersons. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so th this is really simple, and I'll always do this if, especially playing stuff like um, 12 Bar Blueses and anything like that, or if... Teen said to me the other night, we got home from the gig, she said, who's playing the organ? So that's Mick. There you go. Happy days. So, Rotary Speaker Simulator is the best thing to do with this. You can use a chorus maxed out completely. Mm. I used to use my old C2 for that. Right. Just turn the rate and the depth right up and it would kind of, yeah, yeah. not quite the same thing, but with, with a proper rotary speaker simulator, you can get close to it. So um, let's say, uh, so if I'm playing a... You hear that when you turn the vent on, you get that, you get the sense of modulation, but where it starts to sound like an organ, Dan, if you wouldn't mind making it go fast part of the way through. Okay. Or you can make it dirtier to sound like a dirty organ. Now, what I love about that, I used to get super simple. I used to get a Pog and a and a Phase ninety and a bunch of stuff trying to get an organ sound, and it would sound okay, but there's something so much more like genuine. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's it's still a guitar, but the the attack of it, like you know, when you get a B three, and if the attack is just like it goes, and you you get the front of those notes. Yeah, that's got it. Yeah. Whereas nothing I've ever tried before manages to do Has that. Has it the same way. And no. why? Because famously, a lot of those old Hammond players had Leslie rotating speaker cabinets, right? And if you were smart and you played close interval chords as you would on a on a keyboard, I mean, you can keep, you can get closer and closer and closer sure. and you can use other things, various combinations of drive and stuff. You know, the classic one is um, uh, if it goes fast again, stick some heavy drive on uh, I can't remember the notes, but let's go. It's that one. Nice. That one. Uh, sorry, if, I apologise if it was the wrong notes, but that it's that sort of thing. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right. Great. Yeah, with added drive. Cool. I'm rethinking my my approach to my organ now. 
Next one, Daniel. Yes. Number four. Yes. Uh, okay. Achieve hugeness with a slight movement from vibrato. So there's two two, two, two quick parts to this. I've started using the VB2 Waza in my rig, and it's it's nearly an always on pedal. And and I'll show you the way I use it. So if I uh, okay, just the guitar into both amps. Now with the vibrato, this is the vibrato on into both amplifiers. It is, it's almost imperceptible. But what this does, and I love this, there's just a little bit of movement, okay? And it was a, if you, there are a number of guitar players to do this. If you think of the way that like Joe Bonamassa, the way he splits his, his amp, and also one of them has the tremolo one. It's only just. Yeah, I was going to do that in a sec, actually, just as a, a little ending to this. Okay, piece. right. Well, yeah. it's, it's, it's it's a similar thing, but that's using amplitude, whereas I'm I'm actually using the the frequency, right? Does Stephen Wilson do this, or does he use it on no, everything? So he uses. So this is what he do, he does. Okay. So with that little bit of movement from the vibrato. <laughs> If I add a bit of drive to that, And that tiny bit of movement, uh, just it to me, it just says so much. Now, the other thing that you can do, uh, which I, which is, you know, one of the reasons I have it on all the time. If now, if I separate, uh, at the moment that is going into both amplifiers, what I'm going to do now is just send it into the wet amplifier. At this point, is the the Duchess. So, turn off out to turn on the humdinger. That to me is everything. It's massive. That, what, so what? that, it's, so basically, it's a wet dry. It does exactly what your JC120 or your um, your C1 does when you go stereo. It separates the vibrato side from the dry side. In a normal chorus pedal, they're summed, but doing it like this, you've got the dry side in one, you've got the vibrato on the other, and it's just the most it's mega huge. sound. It I, I just huge. love it. Um, we have done lots of videos on wet dry, so if you're confused about the signal routing for that, please go and watch one of those. But basically, instead of your guitar going through all of all of the pedals, all of the pedals, all of the pedals, and off to your amp, it goes through your drives first. It then goes off to the amp one, 
and then part of that signal keeps going through all your modulation pedals and that goes to amp 2 so it's about splitting it before the modulation pedals but we have done lots of videos on yeah. that if you want to check out more on wet dry yeah we both run wet dry rigs we do we do and you yeah. know that and that vibrato I, I like i don't have a course on my board as much as i love my c1 uh and i love my uh, analog man by chorus yeah you know amazing things but that vibrato that bit of movement. Well, you are creating chorus, aren't I'm you? Creating chorus by doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wonderful. Wicked. I like that a lot. Yeah, you really I do. I like that so good. I like that a lot. So that is the the standard VB2. Was a. Is just straight mono. Yeah. Yeah, straight so mono. So you, you couldn't, yeah, you couldn't do it from the thing. Uh, lovely boss colours today. Yes. Yes. I'm enjoy resplendent. Enjoying those colours. Okay. Um, aha. Thicken. But don't sicken. Love it. I was pleased with this. Thicken, but don't sicken with chorus. But in actual fact, I'm going to use Dimension because Dimension C, uh, you see the DC2 Wazza on the board there. Wazza! Dimension, Dan and I have done shows on this. We've done a couple mm -hmm. of shows on, on the Dimension effect. I didn't even know it existed up until about a year ago when we were at Toman at the Gear University. Right. And Boss brought along some stuff before this came out and my knowledge of dimension effects fell into place because you've heard it on so many records mm -hmm. from Stevie Ray Vaughan to Brian Adams and pretty much every other record that was made in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. On its own, it sounds a bit like this. So here's the straight amps. <laughs> It's drippy and lovely. And Every time anyone plays a dimension effect, it tends to be that. <laughs> but apparently it probably wasn't dimension because it hadn't come out when they recorded that. The rack unit had that, hadn't it? Had it. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure the rack unit was out by then. I'm sure there was a truck parked out the back that had all the cables and everything running to it and sometime there was a big dimension to this. I know it'll sound great on this. Oh, it must, have all, it must have all been re-recorded, surely. Yeah, absolutely. Purple Rain by Prince, the purple one. And uh, appropriately enough, it's purple. Um, have we got a wet-dry option with this or just with the VB2? Let's try. Well, let's go straight a minute. So what, what would happen would be is if you're playing with overdrive. Nice, fairly fat overdrive sound. I'm just going to add some more because we can do that. Um, but to, to get it wider, fascinating that sound because it's it seems like it's it's sort of taking out a bit of frequency and then just sending everything else yeah. left and right and even it's even though it's just like dual mono it's such a great sound so it can used like that it can sound a bit effecty mm -hmm. but if we've got an option to do it wet dry mm -hmm. um so it's only going into one amp yep so okay so here is both amps on yep the drive <laughs> This is wet dry. Thank you. 
Man, that is just awesome. The when, when it's done like that, and it's done the wet dry thing, again, it's a subtle shift, but it's a really important one. Yeah. It just that again, that little bit of movement. I on use that it a side. lot actually. Yeah. I use it when we're when we're playing in the band, I use it a lot. Um and it works great when you're playing rhythm, it yeah. can just fatten things out a bit. It's almost like adding a bit of studio production sheen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you can get a similar effect with just a very slight chorusing sound. Yeah. You know, um, your people have been using chorus in heavy tones for a long time. I think it did get to a point where it's maybe overdone. Yeah, sure. But Well, that's the common thing with chorus, isn't it? People exactly. Moan it's like, that it, oh, sounds so, it sounds so great. If we add more, it's going to sound better. But just having a touch of it on there yeah. uh, is, a, is a really great way to add texture and... You know. I think the um, the pedal, the S, the I don't know what S stands for, but the pedal standard side of it, yep, uh, sounds a bit more effecty. I think, from what I can remember. I mean, it can sound oh. pretty sicky, can't it? Yeah, when, yeah. It, when it's full on, but yep. just use a little bit of it mixed in. I really, I'm a big fan of the DC2 Wazza, and I'm super glad they um, they brought it back to life. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Um, Daniel, number six. Number six. Uh, right, add a thickening texture to rhythm parts with a phaser. Uh, the the phaser is, uh, you know, a lot of people use it for your 70s funk vibe. Oh, baby. And it's really cool. I think I might be thing. pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you know the flashlight chords? No. The thing that... Uh, minor, minor, major. Ah. D shape. <clears throat> right. So you, all, everyone knows that sound. Yeah. But uh, with the, with the phaser, if you again, if we look at. At the moment, it's quite a deep phasing sound, mm. okay? If I turn the depth down... And so you can hear the movement, but you're not getting that, that, that really yep. thick pulsating thing. And then add a bit of uh, L grunge on it. Again, what we're doing is we're just adding a bit of movement, but we're adding that bit of movement phase-wise, and it's just giving that a, a different texture. If you're doing an album and you're looking just to change that up with some different guitar parts, it's a really great way to do it. The other thing is, of course, the extreme version of that. Um, there's a great uh, song by band, Australian band called uh, called Powderfinger, um, and I've played this song a thousand times, but. Can't oh, what's the name of the song? Anyway, it's got this the intro line. Mm -hmm. 
And it, so, you know, it's the extreme other side of that can be really cool too. It's funny, isn't it? When you set... My happiness, sorry. My happiness by pad finger. There you go. Well done. When you set any um, modulation pedal to its full wobbliness, they can all sort of... They all do that job. kind of similar, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Would you just... Would you um, indulge me for a second? Yep. You were talking about fattening up with, with flanger earlier. Mm -hmm. I just want to hear the difference between the phaser yeah, sure. and the flanger because sure. that's something that confuses me a lot. So okay. let's, go, let's go phaser. I mean, clearly, tonally, they're very different. One sounds bright and one sounds less bright. But mm. um, I still, to this day, if someone says, is that a phaser or a flanger, I'm still like... Mm. Uh, so typically, the flanger is a much more... Com uh, harmonically, it's much more complex because you have this thing called a comb filter, which is when the you get those uh, two delayed signals. You know, you, if, you look, if you look at it as a sine wave, when they mix and they create all these overtones and they create that that filter and it becomes a really complex all these harmonics jumping out all over the place the phaser doesn't do that um, the phaser if, where, the way that the the flanger is using time and splitting all the frequencies the the phasing is doing it it's frequency dependent so uh, it mixes so uh, as the modulation goes up it's it, those are frequencies that are being mixed in and out of phase so you don't get this really complex harmonic relationship, you know, that you do with the flanger. Um, but there's a fatness that the phase has got. Yeah. Um, that because the flanger is so, so complex and those harmonics, and they're coming out in a lot of the upper frequencies, and you do get that almost metallic sense with the flanger. Yeah. And that's what you don't get with the phaser. A bit more robot voice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's the... I always think, you know, is it is it thick robot kind of I almost think like a phaser is in some way a hollowing pedal it can be yeah because it, it the thing I about things being out of phases they sound hollow yes or they can sound yeah, hollow yeah, anyway can. we could we could spend all day talking about that awesome but there's a really good you know everyone that you know the phaser sound yeah but there are other things that you can do with it that's very cool yeah yeah it's funny, going through this video, I'm seriously thinking about adding a flanger to my board. Oh, yeah. But I don't know about the phaser. I don't know about the phaser. Anyway, okay. Um, number seven. This is something that I do a lot. Okay. Create a mood or feel change in a song by going from fast to slow <laughs> or from slow to fast. Okay. So, again, my favourite modulation pedal of all is the vent. Yep. So... Um, if I'm uh, and there's a there's there is a chord phrase that I I'll always play so I'll, I will play that. Um, I'll just put a little bit of boost on.
No. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah. Any audio like, fast or slow, you can do it with anything oh, that, will, right. that will ramp the uh, speed of the modulation. All right, let me try it with the vibrato. I'm going to yep. go to um, put the drive on. I'm going to go wet dry again. Uh, and I'm going to uh, let me get a, a bit more depth there. Yes, I would. So in, in when I run the wet dry rig, what you get then is the additional weird phase thing that happens between the slowing down mm -hmm. of one against that amp that's always going so it creates even more weird spacey awesome business awesome okay so this is with a vibrato you can play the same thing <laughs> That is so good. Simple, simple, simple. So good. Effective, effective, effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny. St I find stuff like that, as much as I love playing the old big solos and mm -hmm. giving it a bit of that, love that. Actually, some that kind of stuff is so satisfying yeah. to play. It doesn't require any technical ability. All it requires is making the pedal go slow and fast. Cool. Very, very nice. So, like doing that. Um, and also, there's plenty of pedals that have expression pedal control for yeah. certain parameters so if you don't have a fast and slow switch there are plenty of modulation pedals such as the Deja Vibe for example where you can affect the rate using an external expression pedal. Yeah and the vibrato, the vibrato lets you change the depth with, it, with, it, uh, expression with the hold is it? Or? Um, no there's a there's something to do with the hold but it's not I don't know why it's not quite working but um, okay Anyway, but you can plug a pedal and control the depth. Um, I think I think both of us are eight. You're definitely number nine. Uh, okay. Number eight then. Oh, that's you. That's totally you. Well, I'm not sure, but anyway, it's Joey Landreth, really. Make the tremolo more interesting by making it a harmonic tremolo. Yes. Uh, very quick history. In certain, most Fender amps, the tremolo circuit adjusts the volume right so mm -hmm. it, it's a modulation of amplitude mm -hmm. of volume so it gets louder and quieter in a harmonic tremolo there's some other stuff going a lot going on because it it varies um the bass and treble frequencies differently and it sounds very different um normal tremolo sounds like this <laughs> Harmonic tremolo sounds like this. Sorry, feverishly trying to find the uh, the Joey thing there, right. but it just adds that chewiness. Yeah, and it works great on chords, and it works great on on stuff like that. Maybe you hear it less on on single notes. Mm -hmm. 
It almost adds a bit of um, vibe. Yeah, or kind of character. And yeah, it's it's there's definitely phasing going on there. So you've got your it separates your bottom frequencies from your treble frequencies, and flips the phase on one, and then but there's crossover, and then as it as they ramp them up and down separately, and that's where that phasing thing is happening. Is that those crossover frequencies, um, and it is such a cool sound. So if we compare that then to to a phase, let me try and set up a, a similar type phasey sound. <laughs> It's awesome. Such a cool sound. Yeah, yeah. Such a such a cool sound. So perhaps if um, full on vibe is too much or full on phaser is too much, harmonic tremolo might might work. It's yeah. in very 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 few amps. It, it only existed in a few Fender amps, and it's not very common in modern amps. Yeah, but um, it's become a lot more common in pedals. Yeah, it's become a cool sound, isn't it? Over yeah. the past few years, people have sort of rediscovered it. Sounds very good. Okay, Daniel. Number we are galloping towards the end. Okay. Number nine, B8, we are flying towards the end. Be a jet plane. Right, so this is to do with the flanger. And we mentioned Paul Gilbert before. He uh, used to use his, oh, well, he has his Ibanez airplane flanger and that he used uh, the, the original. Then they made a, made a reissue for him. In Australia, are they aeroplanes or are they airplanes? Aeroplanes. Aeroplanes. Aero. So in America, they're airplanes. Are they? And the flanger is called the airplane is it? Yeah, not okay. aeroplane. Yeah, right. that's an interesting vagary of the uh, English language there and right. the American language. So, what we can do with the flanger, we have this, uh, on the ADA flanger, we have this enhanced knob, and um, lots of them, uh, it is called... Uh, Regen? Uh, regeneration, feedback. or feedback. So what it does is, it sends a part of the signal at the end back into the, the input, like a feedback loop. Yeah. So, if we have just the flanger by itself. I start to turn the, the feedback up. Give it a bit of Al Grunjo.
love that. It doesn't sound like a plane. Why aren't you supposed to put loads of gain on and get like a really... Is there a mix knob? Uh, no. Was that airplane for hunting? Um, it's it's a it's well some idea. I think what sounded more robotic was, than Paul Gilbert to me. Yeah, if I sounded like Paul Gilbert does craft work or something. <laughs> but what he does though, he has a, there's a knob on the airplane flanger right. that basically he hits it and it just turns all the regeneration on. Oh, uh, okay. He goes, and then he goes back to his. Oh, so his I see. Thing. Okay, so play me a do 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 kind of riff. Okay. Um, we stepped marginally closer to it I we think. did we did <laughs> we did <laughs> awesome. awesome awesome but that that whole so i uh, I've got a phaser, the, the Mutron Phaser 2 also has that regeneration thing that feeds it back and just to get some really crazy sounds with it, which is really cool. So instead of a uh, sound like a jet plane, we could have called that add regeneration to your flanger or phaser. You could have called it that. <laughs> okay, uh, number 10, make your delay more interesting with modulation. Now, there are two ways to do this, aren't mm -hmm. there? Um, the first way is to just add modulation to your delay pedal. So if you've got something like a carbon copy or any other delay pedal that you can turn the modulation on and off. Mm -hmm. Have we got an option to hear that, Daniel? Yes, of course. Um, so so a, a straight delay, we're using the timeline for today's delay pedal. Uh, so if we just talk about a straight, ordinary delay, yeah? All right, yep, so this is the, the repeats. So what I can do now uh, on the timeline allows me to modulate like adding a chorus, so like, uh, depth and, and uh, speed and depth to the just to the repeats. So now, if you hold a chord, this is where it gets interesting. So, so lovely. Yeah, because we have that modulation hanging over that direct sound, you get this chorusing effect. But what some pedals allow you to do, and this is one of them, is it allows you to affect the delayed sound only. So if I turn the modulation off, I now have the little Elect Lady Moore flanger in the loop. Yeah, just to be, just before we get into that, so just there are a number of delay pedals. They're usually analog delay pedals, but or digital delay pedals that simulate analog delay pedals mm -hmm. that enable you to have modulation and it's all in the one box. Yes. And what we're talking about now is adding another pedal in the loop of the delay pedal, right? Yeah, exactly. So what this what will happen now is that the repeats will come out and actually hit the flanger and it's just the repeats that'll have that effect on. Cool. All right. So 
if you play and I give a little bit of love. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, instantly all over the place, coming up with ideas and playing wrong notes. Well, which is the route to yeah, but doing got, interesting things, right? Yeah. So okay, let's just turn the mix the mix off and then. Turn the mix all the way up, just the delay sound. Did that quite deliberately at the end, turn the phaser on to illustrate the fact that the cool thing about having the modulation in the loop of your delay pedal, if it's able to do it, it means your first note, all the stuff that's not delayed, is unaffected by the modulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So it stays, pr you know, full on and you retain all the attack and all the goodness that mm -hmm. you get. Mm -hmm. The reason I turned the phaser on was to demonstrate that then actually if you turn a modulation effect on all of your signal, yep. that's when it starts getting lost and super effecty and you lose the front of the note and, yep. and all of that. So to answer the question, well, why don't you just add the um, flanger after the delay pedal? That's why. Yeah, it's so cool. And you, But you, you see the different, there's a whole different feel with the tail sort of being flanged and it's a whole different mood. I, I, I love that. It's you, really cool. Yeah, so cool. It's really, so cool. really, really cool. Okay, I believe that was number 10. That was number 10. Number 11, which is kind of the bonus one, is all of these effects, I think, you may well 
associate chorus, straight chorus with the 80s. Mm -hmm. You might associate some of these other sounds with specific genre that you can think of. However, mm -hmm. I would say all of them so far are pretty... I mean, you can use them in pretty much anything. Yeah, absolutely. And you can use them creatively in, in different ways, which yep. I think hopefully we've inspired a little bit about today. There is one effect that is pretty much instant... Jimmy, instant Jimmy, instant Jimmy, or instant Robin, Robin Trower, which is the Deja vibe, which is uh, a univibe based on you know the old sixties uh, multi-stage phaser, which is what it is. Um, and yeah, I mean. That's amazing. Instant, isn't it? Oh. It's just instant. But that's, it, honestly, that it, hearing it here, where you know it's loud, and that the pulsating nature of that vibe, and it just it really affects you. Mm. You know, guttural, isn't it? It, oh, it so is. Yeah, it yeah. so is. It's such a. Oh, I'm looking man. forward to. Um, we're hopefully going to get a twelve string soon. Yes, and uh, oh, my dear friend, uh, Mr. Dave Gregory, is gonna, also going to come. Uh, I'm going to come on and do that. That'll be awesome, uh, Dave Gregory. Um, Twelve string special. But uh, I'll make Doyle Bramall, who um, on his second most recent solo album did a cover of "Hear My Train Come in the Hendrix one really? on the twelve string, and with a vibe, and I think it's probably tuned down to D. It's just. Oh, it's just such an amazing sound. So if we ever get that guitar, I'm looking forward to trying to get Fabulous. that get that sound. Fabulous. Cool. Well, eleven things to do with modulation pedals. Then I, that was quite successful. That I was great. 
that yeah, was so yeah. much fun. Some good sounds in yeah, there. Yeah, man, some really, really good sounds. And that it sort of sounds that can sort of lead you off in a direction. Oh, I love that. Definitely, definitely, uh, you know, on the one hand inspires you to play differently and sec on the other hand demands that you play differently. Yes. And I think yeah, there's yeah, great yeah. value in that. Right. Absolutely. Um, because yeah. you do, you get lost in the chewiness and if you play, you know, you don't have to play anything that tricky, you can just get lost in the sound. Yep. And certainly in a band context, it can really help. Magic. Yeah. 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 Emote. Brilliant, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon uh, who enable us to do what we do. Thank, thank you, you guys so much. We're so grateful. Um, a massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and purchased yourself a, a T-shirt or a beanie or strings. Got a few uh, cat hairs on mine, Dan. Oh, have you? Yeah. Boy's been, been yeah, at it again. He's been at it again, yeah. Uh, and also a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe, if we're still allowed to say Europe at the moment. <laughs> Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey. Uh, in the US of A. Would be um, Riff City Guitar of various locations. And our dear friends in Australia uh, at Pedal Empire. In Brisbane, Queensland. Please check out all those guys online and see what they have to offer. Very good. Very Great. Good. Thanks, guys. Have a fantastic week and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.